Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to talk to you about how to improve the drainage both in your containers and out in your garden. And frankly, I have no advantages that way. My garden is on heavy Nickman Island soil, which means it does not have perfect drainage. And so, so many plants say prefers well-drained well soil or doesn't like wet feet. And so I have to do something to improve that. I'm going to go through that with you today. I have a couple of demonstrations to take you through that will make it so much easier to understand, so stick with me through that. First up is a test to check the drainage on this peat moss and perlite mix. It's six cups in total of the mix, and I'm pouring in two cups of water, knowing that the potting mix will hold some of that moisture. And then I'm measuring how long it takes to release a half a cup into the drainage. And the result here you can see is that it takes about a minute and 20 seconds to drain a half cup. Next up, I do the same thing with a coarse gravel. And it shouldn't surprise you at all that the gravel doesn't hold any moisture and doesn't hold it back much. So it really drains through entirely in less than about five seconds. This, none of this should be surprising us here. Finer materials with more water holding capacity will slow down and hold more water, while coarser materials with more air space will allow the water through faster. So potting soils with more peat moss or core, or that's coconut fiber, or finely composted or shredded wood fines will drain slowly, while potting mix with larger bark chunks and ingredients like coarse perlite, vermiculite, charcoal, or pumice will be faster draining. So, pretty basic, right? Let's see what you make of this one. For my next demonstration, I use the same container with the same potting mix at the top, but I place a generous layer of the coarse gravel at the bottom of the container. So the question being, will it drain fast like the gravel? Will it drain slower, like the potting mix, or somewhere in between? But actually, as I test it, it becomes clear very, very quickly that it is draining slower than either one. In fact, by the time it reaches 1.30, a minute and 30 seconds, it's basically stopped draining, and I have to add another cup of water just to get it to finish and get me the half cup of drainage. So what happened here? Well, this is not a new experiment. This has been done for a long time in soil science, and what they've found is that when you combine a finer textured potting mix up above and a coarser textured layer down below, that it stalls the drainage process. Up above, in the finer textured peat and perlite layer, it actually absorbs more of the moisture, holding it and release, not releasing it very readily into a coarser layer down below. This goes against what traditionally was thought of in horticulture, where they would throw rocks or stones or other coarse material in the bottom of pots to try to improve drainage. So I can tell you a few things about improving the drainage in your containers and nursery pots already. First of all, choose a potting mix that has a good amount of coarser material in it. Things like those coarse chunks of perlite or vermiculite. Second, do not layer with a coarser material at the bottom of the pot. Any of those interface layers that change the texture of your soil will tend to disrupt drainage. And third of all, use a taller and narrower container rather than a wide or shallow container. The wide and shallow containers, the low ones, tend to hold more moisture per the soil volume. Now, you may wonder, what are the succulent growers doing growing in shallow containers then? Well, the reason is because succulents actually have very shallow roots, so placing them in a tall container would be a waste of space. But they get away with it by using a particularly coarse potting mix to try to improve the drainage. And now moving on to a discussion of drainage in the garden or outdoors, I'll do one final experiment here, and it involves pulling some soil from my garden. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I have heavy Nickerman Island soil and I'll show you how it drains. So I'm placing that in the bottom of the same container in place of the gravel and placing the peat-based mix above that. Now let's see how it does. So it's becoming clear quite quickly here that my garden soil is no champ when it comes to drainage. In fact, it slows right down just like it did with the gravel and I have to add another cup of water just to get it to finish. In the end, it's the slowest timed of everything I've done so far. So what does that mean for drainage in my garden? Before I go too far into recommendations in the garden, let me go back and amend that list of recommendations for containers and say that garden soil is not great as a potting mix. 
First of all, it's far too heavy, and as in the case of my garden soil, it doesn't drain all that well. Back out in the garden here, let's look at the hole that that soil came from. And yeah, you can see this is a heavy, slick garden soil. And just replacing that soil in the planting hole with something that's better drained, as you can see from the demonstration, isn't going to solve your problem. In fact, out here in the garden, it's much, much worse. Because when I normally get rain here, the water collects at that top layer of the soil and then just slowly percolates down through the profile. But in effect, by creating a hole with a coarser, more well-drained material in it, you've created a drain. A drain to nowhere, but a drain nonetheless. So all of the runoff from the surrounding soil now is going to collect into that hole and waterlog the roots of your plant. This is why I prefer to backfill with the native garden soil for my plantings with no major amendments in the planting hole. The more similar the soil is in the planting hole to the surrounding garden soil, the less weird layers and drainage I have to contend with. If I improve the soil with organic or other amendments to improve drainage, I could be creating a larger problem for the plant and its roots. I'm also in favor of a modest tamping down of the soil after planting to simply restore the soil in the planting hole to a similar firmness and compaction to be consistent with the surrounding soil so it doesn't become that drain. Now I can imagine some objections to my point of view. After all, don't we want to give our garden soils the best possible start? Don't we want to give them a dedicated area where they can have a loose, uncompacted planting soil, something with lots of organic matter and fertilizer in it so the roots don't have to go searching anywhere. Well, the truth is, when you're making a planting, you want the roots to have to go looking. You want to go looking for water, you want to go looking for fertilizer. So I really do recommend that you use the native soil and if you want to make some improvements, you improve the entire garden from the top down rather than just hitting it planting hole by planting hole. So let's talk about the improvement of heavy and modestly slow draining soil with other clay characteristics that you'd like to improve. So I've done a whole other video on the topic of improving clay and heavy soils, which I'll link above. One option is to add organic mulches to the entire area, which will improve the structure and workability of the soil as it slowly breaks down these mulches also protect the top layer from the drying and crusting that are sometimes present in clay soils. Another option is to plant mixed cover crops as a green manure and for their clay breaking roots. I also have a video discussing the option of incorporating sand into some depth at the top profile of the soil. It's not exactly my first option, but if you want to hear a discussion on that method, I'll link that video as well. It's important, however, to note that if you're really dealing with a serious drainage problem, like consistent puddling and a deep layer of low permeability soil like clay, the measures I just mentioned probably will not solve your problem. Improvements at the surface, like mulch or green manures, can just as easily end up waterlogged themselves underwater. If you do incorporate sand to a certain depth, you may be able to move some of the moisture down a little bit lower, and if you have shallow rooted crops, that may solve your problem. Well, let's talk then about some of those most difficult drainage areas where you have standing water or puddles for a good portion of the year. And in that case, I can't think of anything better than a French drain. So remember I mentioned that if you dig a hole and place a coarser material in it, it will collect water from the surrounding area. Well, if you do the same thing with a trench and fill it with a coarse material and have a pipe at the bottom of it, that is a French drain and you can redirect the water away from your troubled areas into a lake or a pond or another area for drainage. You obviously, for best aesthetic effect, will use the French drain with gravel or something like that. Or if you don't mind the way it looks, you can just use the contours in your landscape and keep an open ditch to carry the water away as well. And what else could you do? Well, in my area, even though we have a fairly heavy soil, one of the main crops is blueberries, which actually prefer a decent drainage around their roots. And you can see what they've done here. They've contoured the land to create hills and valleys, the hills for the rows of blueberries. Now this may not solve the worst of the drainage issues, but it does at least allow the shrubs some area for their shallow roots to escape waterlogging. 
You could emulate this in your garden with raised beds, or if you don't care for the wooden frames, which can sometimes be susceptible to rot against moist soil, you can go for the no-dig style of raised mounds. And you can see this demonstrated on Charles Dowding's channel. Okay, that's it from me on how to improve the drainage of your soil. I hope this answered some of your questions. And if you have any further questions on the matter or some comments, like if you've had some success in this regard and want to share that, I'm sure everybody would appreciate you leaving that in the comments below. Thank you again for watching.